It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about backups. Backups are such a massively important topic. I cover them a couple of times a year just because they're so important. I came from the Mac world uh, before I really started just using Linux all the time as my daily driver. My wife still uses Mac uh, here in the house and uh, for me it's preferable to having a Windows machine running here in the house. But one of the things that Apple definitely got right is Time Machine. Time Machine does some really incredible things and it makes it very easy to just set up a drive and start creating backups. It is so simple and it does such a great job of doing deduplicated backups, which means once it backs up a file, unless that file changes, it doesn't back it up again. If it does change, it only backs up what changes about it. So it keeps your backups very small, which means you can back up your 400 gigabytes of files on your two terabyte drive and it, keep it, it can keep a really long history of backups for you. That two terabyte drive can keep an incredible history of backups for you. And the way that they've set it up is that you get so many years and then so many months and then so many weeks and then so many days. So like the last 30 days, the last four weeks before that, four months after that, and so on, going backwards in time. That's why it's called Time Machine. But you can go back and find a file that you edited more than a year ago and bring it back like it was the thing you just started with. Now the Time Machine interface was interesting. And they tried to do a 3D thing and make it kind of fun, but at the same time, it's kind of a pain to go back and find stuff. So I've been looking for something on, on Linux, and there's, uh, there's Time Shift. It's not bad, but it didn't really do like off the machine backups. It only did local backups, which was kind of annoying to me a little bit. Um, there's Deja Dupe, and then just, I think Deja Dupe is rebranded as just backups for Ubuntu. And you've got all these different things that they have out there that are okay, and they're, and they're not bad, and they're not super hard to set up either. There's some great server client type things like your backup and, and uh, Duplicati and, and so on like that. But if you really want something that's just kind of a, let me set up my USB drive and plug it in, or let me just send this over through SSH, then Pika Backup, I think, is going to be a super great tool. It's really, really intuitive. It's quite easy to use, and they make it for pretty much any version of Linux that you've got. It's a GNOME Circle app, which means the GNOME team has looked at it and said, yeah, we like this. We think it fits what we're trying to do. You've done a great job with it. Uh, that's the way I understand it anyways. The license on it is GNU uh, License 3, so GNU version 3 open source license, which is awesome. They've got all the licensing information right there, and it's out here on GitLab, so uh, you can get out there and get it anytime. The easiest way to install it is from FlatHub, but there are packages out there available as well if you want to get those. But uh, being on Fedora right now, it, their software center just pulls things from FlatHub, so I've just gone out and looked up Pika Backup, just typed in Pika. Hit install. It's going to go do the FlatHub install for me. So this is how simple it's going to be for you guys as well. If you're on a if you're on a Linux system, make sure you set up Flatpak and then just set up FlatHub as one of your repositories, and you can search for this and then just run the command to install it. Um, if you don't have it in your software center, a lot of them have Flatpak available in their software centers these days, so it makes it super easy to get it installed and set up. Once we've installed Pika Backup, we can just start it up by clicking on the icon. Give it a few seconds because it does take a second to start the first time, but I've noticed after that it starts up very quickly. I um, haven't had any problems with it since then. So we're going to get into the configuration of using Pika Backup as one of your backup solutions right after this. I just want to say how truly thankful I am to my patrons over at Patreon for your monthly support. It just means so much to me that you find value in my content. Uh, I love finding open source software and sharing it with you, and I love that you love learning about it and that you appreciate what I'm doing. Also, to the people who s just buy me a coffee through PayPal, man, I cannot say how much that means to me. It just brightens up my day every time I see anything come in like that that just tells me people appreciate what I'm doing. And all my subscribers at YouTube, you guys are awesome, so thank you so very much. If you haven't already, please go down and click on that subscribe button. And also click on the thumbs up so that YouTube knows that you like my video and they'll pass it along to people who also might like it. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel grow and keep going. Thank you again. Now let's get started. 
So when we first start up Pika Backup, first, of course, you want to have something that you're going to back up to. Now, whether that's a NAS and it's going to be a remote system, or in this case, I just plugged in a drive that I've got and I'm using it to store a lot of my stuff. It's still got about a little less than two terabytes of space left. Um, overall, it's a five terabyte drive, but you can see it's got 2.3 terabytes available. Um, I've got about half full of some other stuff already, but that's fine. It'll still work. So um, it's this drive right here, and I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to click on Let's Get Started. And right here, it'll show you uh, the different spaces that you have right now. Now you also have the option of doing a remote location. So if you click on that, it's gonna want you to set that up either using Samba, uh, SMB, or using uh, SSH. So it's kind of up to you how you do that, but if you have a remote location that you can access that way, then you could set that up as your backup uh, destination as well. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna pick this drive and we get this nice little simple screen. And it wants to know what do you wanna call this? So I'm just gonna call this Backup uh, UB Studio, and we'll call this Fedora, just because that's the one that I've got on here right now. And you can see it's gonna back up to the Elements Drive. Um, you can do more configuration if you want to. You can click in here and, and kind of do some other things. Uh, and you can say, you know, like, hey, what, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna put this? So you can see I've got movies, TV, and torrents. I don't really wanna create a separate place for that to go or dig down any further. This name is fine. So. Uh, if you click up here, you've got some other settings as well. So you've got some command line arguments that you could put in also, nothing that we need in this case. So I'm just gonna click on continue. So when you get to this next screen, it says, do you wanna encrypt your backup or do you wanna leave it unencrypted? It's completely up to you. If you click unencrypted, then there's nothing to fill in. If you click encrypted, you just need to put in a password that's nice and strong. And then remember what that is. So I suggest using something like Bitwarden in order to save your passwords and make sure that you don't forget what you used. Um, you know, it's really important to be able to access your data later after you back it up and restore it if you need to as well. So we're going to go there. We're going to just do what it says. It's creating that location for us and it's setting up the encryption for us there. We've got the drive elements that we're going to back up to. And it says backup has never run, so we can just click and tell it to back up now. But first we've got some things we might want to set up. So we've got this nice little area here that says files to back up and it says it's just going to start with our home folder. This isn't specifically intended to back up the entire machine as an image because it's really easy to just reinstall a Linux distro, pull your home folder over completely. And basically you're going to be back up and running the way that you were and you don't even want everything in your home folder actually. So down here it already kind of says let's ignore the caches. So anything that's, that's a cache file that's just temporary stuff that takes up a lot of space sometimes, it, it's going to ignore that. What I want to do is I want to tell it to ignore some other things as well. So I'm just going to go here, I'm going to click on plus, and it's got some defaults. So you can say exclude a folder, exclude a single file, exclude a pattern. And then down here, you've got a few pre-set pre up things. So I do want it to exclude the trash. I want it to exclude the flat pack app installations because I can go back and install those myself. And then it's got this virtual machines and containers. I'll tell it to go ahead and do that. I don't think I have any running on this machine, but if you did, that might be a good thing to uh, also just not back up. Now, when it says containers, what it really means is don't back up the container itself. You might want to back up the mapped volume information that you've got, and you probably do want to back that stuff up. So if you're running this on a machine that has that kind of thing running, definitely make sure you're backing up that mapped volume so you have that data if you need to pull it, you know, pull a new version of the image, start the container and have that volume mapped again right here where we can say I want to exclude other folders you may have some folders in here that you don't want it to back up so for instance applications I don't want so I'm just gonna add that and then I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna say uh, plus and folders and downloads I don't really need it to back that up either so I'm starting to kind of build this list of things that I'm like hey you don't have to back up all of this stuff um, another one, and let's just see if it's here. I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to say folder, and I'm going to go down here to Nextcloud, and Nextcloud syncs. I don't need it to back it up off of my drive in this case. So again, I'm just saving space on my backups by doing this. Once you've kind of set up all the things that you want it to do, you can just click on backup now to kind of start that initial backup, and you'll see that it's going to start running, and it's going to start kind of doing its thing. It'll keep track of the percentage as it goes. I'm backing this up to a spinning drive, so it's going to take a little time to get this going. Uh, you can see it's got about 30 minutes, so I'll come back after this completes and we'll talk a little bit more about what else we can set up because we also have the archives where we can see what we've backed up as well as a schedule we can set so that it backs this up on a regular schedule instead of us having to come in and manually click it. 
All right, that backup finished, and it's great that I've got my first version of the backup, but we also want to go over here and do a scheduled backup. So we're just going to kind of look here and see what it says. So it says scheduled backups disabled right now. So basically you enable it with this little toggle. When we enable it, it says how often do we want them? Do we want them daily? And you can pick hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. So it's kind of up to you how you do that. As little as I change things on my systems, I think daily is fine. You can absolutely do hourly. They're, they're very small changes, especially most of the time when you run them hourly. Uh, regularly clean up your archives is up to you. I don't know if I want it to be doing that uh, as much, but you can say keep many. Uh, if you go here, you can actually change this to keep some or custom. And when you set custom, you get a lot of options here. So you can say keep 45 or yeah, 48 hourly, so two days worth of hourly and then 14 worth of 14 days worth of daily and then four weekly 12 monthly and finally 10 yearly so you're basically working upwards in times so you've got two days of hourly backup so if you realize you messed up last you know in the last hour you can go back to your previous hour backup bring back a file and you've got it there if your system crashes you've got a pretty frequent set of backups that you can pull from in order to get your data back which is nice here you've got 14 days so two weeks worth of daily backups as well if one of those is going to be better for you here you're going to be having those four weekly backups um, so beyond just the dailies you'll have four like separate weekly backups so let's just say it was sunday 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 then you've got your 12 monthlies so maybe the first of the month it just i don't know exactly how it figures out when to do the monthly but then you've got 10 years. So if you really wanna have all that data going back, you can. Um, I think 10 years is a little bit excessive for me anyways. So I think I would take this down to maybe two years, probably six months worth of monthly. And then we've already got the two weeks and, and four, four, weeks, uh, four weeks, 14 days and 48 hours. So that should be fine for what we wanna do, which is great. So we've got that set and everything should be good. And it sets it to custom, which is great. Uh, we've set that you know to hourly so we can set what we want per every hour, which is awesome. So we've got the schedule set If we go back and check it's still there. It's enabled which is great Okay, so if we go look at our archive, we can see here that we've got this one archive where it created this archive for us We can just click on the little down arrow and we can expand that to see some details You can see the name of the archive, which is basically this uh, indicator here We've got this duration, how long it took. So it actually took about 15 minutes. Uh, we can browse our saved files, and then of course we can delete the archive. And you want to be a little careful with that delete because you're saying, hey, I want to get rid of this archive of data. But if we say browse, it's going to open it up in our files application. It's going to show us what's in here, which is basically my home folder. So you can see kind of the path that this takes all the way down there. But if we go to, let's just go to my home folder here in the files application. Let's just open up a new window. And let's actually just go back to my pictures folder here. And let's get rid of a couple of these things. So I've got this one that says color globe and mesh central. Let's just delete those two files. So I'm going to delete them. They got moved to the trash. I'm just going to empty the trash to prove that I'm really getting rid of them. Empty the trash, it's gone. So now let's go here to my pictures. This is my backup archive. I'm gonna go here, there's Color Globe and Mesh Central. I can just take these and drag them right back over here and it copies them right back. And if I open them up, they're valid files, they still work just like we want. If I do the Mesh Central one, there's the Mesh Central logo. So everything's back where it was. So not only have we run a backup, but we've actually done a restore from the backup to make sure that the backup is valid. Now they have some other functions that you can do as well. So let's go back and look at this. So you see here where it says integrity check. So you can say, check the integrity now. So one, make sure that everything's good. Make sure that the file doesn't have corruption, things like that. So that's a really awesome function. So you can do the integrity checks there to make sure things are running really well as well. clean up your archives from here also so you've got a lot of a lot of really great functions right here in this archive pane if we go back to the backup pane we can see that we've got this backup going so I'm gonna change a file here so let's go to my documents and, but let's just create a new LibreOffice document um, here 
And let's just put in something like, this is a test document for backups with Pika backup. Okay, it's not a huge document, but we're gonna call this test doc one and save it. Okay, so it's saved to my home folder. So now we're gonna go back over here and click backup now. And it's gonna ask you, do you wanna stop browsing files? So let's just say, yeah, let's just say um, start the backup, which should stop browsing the files. The little file browser went away. It's gonna go through and you see, boom, it did pretty much really fast because there was hardly anything different. So if we go look at our timestamps here, we can see that the first one was 8.16, this one is at 9.22, this is Eastern Daylight Time. So I'm just gonna click on the, on the button again. I'm gonna say Browse Files. And you can see it brings up everything, but really this is just a piece of the backup. It's actually bringing everything up from the archive. So it's doing some really smart stuff in the background, which is awesome. If we go to our documents, here's our file right here and uh, we're, we're set. So let's close that and then let's go here to our actual home directory. I'm gonna open that document and I'm just gonna change it and um, let's go get, let's go get some lorem, copy it and then go back to our document here and we'll just add some lorem text and save it. And then we'll go back to our application for, for Pika right here and then let's just go create one more backup and again it asks about browsing so i can say start the backup so it closes the browser in the background if it's already open you can see it does it very quickly and it says backup completed with warnings home brian this uh, while we backed it up file changed while we backed it up so it was it's because i'm recording the screen so this file has changed while they're backing it up so that could create corruption Generally, you wouldn't want that to happen, but I like that they give you a warning that I was doing that. But again, we can go to the archives, and we see now we've got yet another new version, and we should be able to go in and, ref and bring that version back. But the original version, so let's say I added that lorem text to the wrong thing, I, I messed it up, whatever. Let's go browse our archive. Let's go find that file. This should be the original version. So I'm gonna copy this version I'm gonna go back to my actual files directory here, and I'm going to replace this one. So I'm gonna show you real quick. This is the one that's there. It's got the lorem text. I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna paste. It's gonna ask me if I wanna replace it. I do. And now I'm gonna open it. And you see it doesn't have the lorem text anymore. So I was able to go back and get back a version of something that I wanted. So it's that versioning backup that you get that's really kind of a nice feature that that thing that I've been looking for and this is just going to run on a schedule I've been running on another machine that I use it's been doing it every day just like I wanted I'm going to let this one run hourly since it's a pretty good size hub, external hard drive and uh, kind of let those build up but I really like this I think it's an awesome awesome application it's called Pika Backup again out there available flat hub there's different things for package repositories and different ways of getting it so you can check out their different ways of installing it but i highly recommend if you're looking for a really nice backup solution that kind of rivals and competes with that kind of time machine type backup that you get on mac os 10 but makes makes it easier to do it on linux i think pika backup is great and honestly i think the interface for pika backup is is a bit easier to use than, than the one in time machine time machine is really cool and it looks cool and the visuals are cool but it's a little bit clunky to actually use and find something when you want to find it. I really like this. I think this is just absolutely spectacular. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the open source journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.